morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. And uh, this is one for the record. Uh, back in, let's see, let's go, let's go down. Three years ago is when we began to talk about uh, the asteroids, things like that. Uh, the meteorite belt being a larger concern than that of even Nibiru. One of, one of the topics that we had covered here, and this is on March the 16th, 2020. And uh, I'm going to play a little clip in here of this video here, because uh, a lot of people felt like, well, nothing ever happened. And uh, of course, I began to think the same, other than I would be told that they that we do have, you, know, you have to keep in mind, the Earth is... Uh, I think what three fourths is water, and most of these uh, these meteorites that were hitting the Earth were hitting oceans, things of that nature. But what I didn't know is that we did have impacts on the Earth, very very significant ones, that were being covered up by local authorities and try to suppress so that the world never knew about it. Uh, let me first play with play for you the March. 16th 2020 video because 10 days later there's going to be an impact in Africa and then subsequently we've also found other impacts throughout uh, the time period before and even after where I spoke about this up in uh, the uh, the uh, permafrost region that uh, up in the North Pole area so I'm going to first play this for you just as a reminder and then I'm going to look at some of this information just to share that with it's you. It's not the big issue. There is a thing that we called a meteorite belt. As it was said to me, that's the way you call it. So maybe there's something more to it in another realm of thinking that I don't understand. But that's really not the point. The point is, there are objects that are going to strike the Earth in the very near future. And it's actually in a near future in a way like you could never imagine. This whole thing that I shared with people a little while back when I was up there in Ohio at the, at the uh, conference that Paul put on about Planet X, when I brought in that little chip there from a scientist that had shared that with me, and this was a very sincere scientist. Now, I don't say he was an astronomer or, or anything like that, astrologist, whatever you want to call it. I forget the right terminologies for that, so forgive me if I'm saying the wrong words. Please take right me for term. what my heart is trying to say here tonight to you. Uh, I think he's, uh, some people say that he was an astronomer. I don't say that he was an astronomer. He's definitely a very intelligent man, and I would say in his 70s, he shared that, that information with me. He had put in his information an estimated time of 2023. as far as Planet X goes, that is, uh, and its arrival into our solar system. I know that there is also... Now, interestingly enough, later that was corroborated as well, uh, and it was uh, actually it was supposed to be entering into the solar system in late 2022 is what uh, uh, scientists were saying here, or at least what I was being told about that. Uh, and his actual prediction was December of 2023 that it would pass Earth. Now, he did tell me, the, the guy that gave me the memory stick, that uh, uh, he didn't know for sure how accurate that date was. There was still another uh, bit of information of math that he would need to be more precise. He said, but that was his best guess he could give. He said it, he said it could be off. He said, naturally, it could be off. I may not be exactly right on that. Uh, so, and, and we still don't really know. No one really knows. I know when we were at the EMP Shield, uh, which we still have to get that documentary edited that we put together there, uh, the guys there told me that everything that they had learned from people that they dealt with in the Pentagon uh, said that you needed to be ready by 2024, uh, but that was as far as they would go. In fact, one time he actually heard a high-ranking uh, general mentioned the very word Planet X. He said, in fact, until then, he never even believed in it. He didn't believe in the conspiracy theories and things like that. He said, but when he was sitting in the Pentagon meeting and hears him mention the word Planet X, he said that made him take notice that this was just more than a conspiracy theory. 
So with that being stated, and here it was, like I said, March the 16th, 2020, I'm talking about the asteroid belt on this video here, what no one else will tell you is in the title of it. Um, and actually, it did get a lot of views. 156,583 views has been on this video thus far. Uh, and as a result of that, I was totally unaware of this particular in Accur, Africa. By the way, Accur, Africa, I'll show you where that's at. It's in Nigeria. It's right there, that little bitty spot there on the map. I'll back out a little further so you can just see Africa as a whole. Uh, they had an impact. Now, local authorities immediately began to work on covering this up. I'll zoom in. I got it on Google Earth right now. Uh, it's Accur is actually a fairly good sized city. Uh, once you zoom in, you begin to see all the streets and things like that uh, that is in that region there. Uh, they do have a lot of modern buildings in the city, things of that nature there. Uh, we can see the rooftops, things like that. Of course, they got a lot of old old type homes and, and things. I'm not saying that everything is all modern there uh, 100%, but it is a fairly good sized city. Now, another thing about Accor that is interesting is Accor actually uh, has a spoken language. Let me just see real quick if I can find that on here. Um, yes, uh, right here. Uh, Accor speaks the Yoruba language. In fact, Nigeria, I think, has some 56 different native languages that are spoken there in Africa, but Yoruba is the third most spoken language in the country of Nigeria. And oddly enough, when the authorities actually came to uh, to actually uh, tell the people of uh, Akur that this was not a meteorite that struck, but rather it was an exploded uh, truck. Uh, there was a bomb on a truck and the truck exploded and left this crater there. They're speaking to the people in English. Now, none of these people here speak, or at least I don't say they don't speak English, but I'm sure some do because English is spoken in Nigeria as well. But here you are, native people there, and everything I've heard thus far in the videos from them, they're speaking, you know, whatever native language is. Like I said, your, uh, I believe what that, what was that? Yeah, Yoruba. That's the language that you hear them speaking there. But we have the authorities are coming there and for their little videos and camera as they explain what's going on, he's speaking in English, which lets you know they're making sure Western audiences uh, do not believe what their true reports are. Let's listen to this just for a moment. Escorted by uh, the personnel of the police ordinance, explosive ordinance department. That's our uh, EOD, the department that is equipped, is trained, is charged with the responsibility of taking care of situa uh, bomb situations, of explosives of any kind. And this consignment was being duly escorted. But unfortunately, along the road here, the vehicle developed a fault. And when the driver noticed it, in fact, from the explanation of the escort commander, they had to try to move away from where there were houses uh, uh, so that they could park and, and see if they could uh, put off the, the, uh, the problem. It, that was when they immediately parked and he came out and noticed that smoke was emitting from the engine. In his effort to put it off, to control it, was not possible, rather it was fire. Of course, they had to move away from the scene and the normal uh, professional drill, the escort personnel had to So this was the fabricated uh, facts that, uh, or fabricated lie that the, uh, the, the military of Nigeria gives the people. Uh, the engine caught fire on their truck and they had to move away because they knew it was dangerous because they were toting a bomb inside of the truck there. And of course the bomb ends up detonating and blowing up this massive crater in a core. Um, here is a actual photograph of that. Uh, let me see if I can't blow that up a little bit larger for you. And uh, so you can see this for yourself. Uh, it is, and, and I've got a very well put together film on this, 
This thing is 25 foot deep, 70 foot across in diameter. It is a massive, massive crater. But not only that, you see the buildings in the background. Now, the walls are not blown in from a bomb blast, but the roofs are tore off. And we do find out that there was an eyewitness, 12.45 a.m. in the morning, uh, uh, that, that actually witnessed the passing of the fiery object coming through the sky at a very fast rate of speed and hit the ground. Then uh, the, uh, some of the local um, uh, uh, scientists from the university did determine that it was, in fact, an asteroid that hit the ground. I'm going to play this clip here from Skywatch Media News. And so you can see what they actually reported about this. They show a little bit of everything, and they have some very good information put together on this particular event here. And, of course, subsequently, because we did have NASA already warning of an asteroid that was coming dangerously close to the Earth, albeit, you know, some, what, I forget how many uh, thousands of miles of way. It wasn't really supposed to be of a concern, but they were still concerned nonetheless. Uh, and, of course, this thing hits at that time anyway. Listen into this. The governing body of Andu State almost succeeded in convincing suspicious residents of the city of Akur that the massive explosion was just an accident. That was until such time as experts in the field of geophysics and earthquake engineering examined the blast site. It was at this time that the story of what had happened began to change in a rather dramatic fashion. The expert examiners, professors of geophysics from a nearby university's earthquake and space weather laboratory, indicated that the explosion was not the result of an accident. Rather, it was caused by a giant rock from space, actually a large fragment of a nearby asteroid. According to the investigation of the blast site and using preliminary calculations, the experts concluded that a large rock had impacted the location, hitting the Earth at an angle of 43 degrees. In essence, it was a natural phenomenon, not an accident. Their preliminary findings were in line with an actual eyewitness account that took place at around 12.45 a.m. local time on the morning of March 28th, where a nearby resident sighted a huge flying object traveling at tremendous speed above them. Within a few seconds, an explosion was heard in the distance as buildings began shaking. The expert examiners further elaborated on the investigation of the blast site in a manner that was contradictory to the explanation of explosive detonation given by the governing authorities. According to the experts, there was no evidence of a buried vehicle or buried explosives from the site. Upon further examination, a number of foreign rocks and strange metallic objects were discovered within the crater, which begs the question of whether there was the presence of asteroid or meteor fragments. A research group carried out a detailed analysis of the impact site, they established that the impact crater was circular, with a diameter of nearly 69 feet and with a depth of more than 25 feet. This would suggest a natural phenomenon. The group also discovered that there was water oozing from the edges of the impact site, but there was no evidence of a fire or any burning or radioactive materials. The impact of the blast covered a 1 kilometer, 3,280 foot radius of the crater surroundings. Therefore, their conclusion is that a large meteor from the asteroid belt traveling at a great speed impacted the location at an angle of 43 degrees, which created an ejecta blast zone that caused roofs to collapse and walls to give way to numerous structures. The meteor impact event in Akur is reminiscent of the Shelyabinsk mid-air explosion that took place in February of 2013, 
an extraordinary event that released 30 times more energy than the Hiroshima bomb, while damaging more than 7,000 buildings. The visualization in the aftermath of what is being... One of the things that I'd say there, uh, in light of the one that hit Russia there, is that it came in at a far less steep of an angle, and therefore it covered a far greater uh, area of devastation. If you look at the uh, photos and stuff, and I think even in his uh, uh, presentation, he'll actually show some of that in there. The, the buildings, of course, from the blast site, in fact, including even this trench right here that comes down through there, uh, that's just a shock wave uh, knocking a huge, in fact, I've seen a different footage of, photo of that. You know, that thing is at least about eight, nine feet deep. Uh, and that's caused from the shock wave of this rock coming right over before it actually impacts the earth there. Um, it is just massive in scale there. And then the buildings, uh, most of them, especially when you go back at a little bit further distance, and let me kind of pull that up for you. You can see the buildings even in the background here. Uh, but uh, most of the buildings here that are damaged as a result of this thing here uh, are uh, the rooftops um, and... And of course, uh, that would be consist more consistent uh, as this uh, this particular um, asteroid comes over. Look, look at that. Look, look at just some of the just even in this video footage here. You know, you got you do have some walls and stuff, but again, even those walls there, those walls there that are that are knocked out, that follows the actual uh, shockwave trench itself that was caused. There's that there's that trench right there. Look at the look at the size of the trench of this thing. Right now, if a bomb were to went off, a bomb is not going to create this what probably 200 meter long trench as well. This this is like nuts, right? Uh, and it looks to be about seven foot deep. The buildings around, all the impacts, everything there, all seem to be very consistent with that. Uh, of the of the asteroid itself not anything consistent with a bomb but it's kind of funny how authorities will take and try to uh, convince you that it's a bomb uh, when in fact it's not uh, I, I, that's something I find interesting uh, in, in itself there I'm trying to see if I can get some better uh, pictures there of the build there you go there's some of the buildings there and like I said most of that is the roofs themselves naturally because it's above uh, coming over, coming down at that angle there, and then affecting the tops of the buildings. And we're talking about big, big structures as well, um, uh, you know, that, that, that show this on there. So I, it was very fascinating. And of course, and even with all this, there's not a lot of information out there. That was another thing I thought was interesting. There is a lot of, you know, like I said, you know, a lot of this just ended up getting covered up. This is one of the larger buildings right here, and it's mainly roof damage. I mean, but yet... Uh, now it does it is using a metal roof but it does have all the steel trusses inside on this building right here totally just ripped completely off uh, they got tarps over these buildings in the back here uh, you know very serious damage that was done and of course a very very large impact well i i didn't do a whole lot i wanted to be able to share this with you guys but i didn't get to do a lot of research afterwards but i did do some more research one of the other things that I ran across that I thought was interesting is also the uh, PBS on Nova. They were talking about um, uh, these impacts that happened in the tundra region or up there in the, um, uh, I call it North Pole there. And they're calling them giant sinkholes. But yet there has already, scientists have already been discussing too, they thought this could be actually an asteroid impacts as well because of the way the blast is. But much like that of uh, uh, the situation, uh, and this is in the Arctic region, look at them. I mean, it's just amazing. Circular holes once again, and some of these are 70 foot deep. And uh, but they're saying that uh, later they decide that oh methane gas is just blowing up underground is blowing up and blowing up nice round holes. If methane gas was blowing up, why would it always be round holes? Uh, why not 
Why, why not maybe oblong holes if it's methane gas? Why is each one of these uh, sites like this very similar to that of a asteroid impact instead? There you go. There, 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 there's your good example right there. No different than what we see down there in Africa where you do have eyewitnesses of the object coming in. This region here, there are no eyewitnesses because you're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but again, very reminiscent of what an asteroid would do. And they knew they couldn't just up and explain it as a sinkhole. If you ever see anything about sinkholes, sinkholes, when they happen, like in this case here, watch this here. You got the ground caving in, sinkhole goes down. In every case of a sinkhole, there's none of that heaped up dirt around it. It just everything falls in and it's nice, smooth, smooth edges there. Uh, just like in all these cases where they're showing the sinkholes that are popping up around the earth. And, um, uh, and of course, we do know we've talked about those things as well. More and more, you're going to see that. Uh, there's a lot of geological changes that are happening. The earth is receiving in so much radiation. That's another thing that we did in that video here. We was talking about the 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 radiation that's coming in uh, from space, from the sun, et cetera, that's affecting the Earth. Uh, a lot of that reminiscent, uh, or, or a lot of that is effects of the binary system at a distance coming in that's affecting the sun, which in turn is affecting the Earth. And we're going three years ago. We were sharing that information with you already. Um, but as we get into this here, and here we go here, CNN News again, they're trying to explain it to massive sinkholes and, and things like that. But again, uh, it's, it's just too strange. And, and in that video there of Nova, one of the things that they do bring out, and let me get to the right spot in the video for that. Um, I don't forget exactly. Uh, we'll, have, we'll take a guess at it here. Um, but one of the things they bring out, they ended up finding, uh, I think it was a total of eight of these impacts like this More in the region there. More giant craters are discovered. And, but, but again, they immediately, they're wanting to get everybody convinced that these craters are caused because methane gas blew up. Uh, and all right, here's where they're going to show you the impacts. Watch there. Look there. There you go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them there is what has hit in that region right there in the area uh, close to what they call Yamal. Um, and that's kind of like the end of the earth as the natives call that uh, up in Russia there. So uh, I think it's a bit suspicious. And, uh, and like I said, if it was just methane gas blowing up out of the ground, why does it always have to be perfectly round holes? Well, why is it, why isn't it, oblong if methane gas is going to blow up why does does methane gas only blow up in circles see it, it, it doesn't seem to make sense when they say that is there methane gas in the ground sure there is russia is one of the biggest places on the planet with natural gas resources why do you think they're pumping it into europe to heat the homes and things like that they've got massive amounts of that even where i live here in tennessee one of the biggest things that we have under, under the ground here is methane gas. It is, uh, everybody around here practically has natural uh, gas wells here uh, from where they discovered methane gas in the ground. Uh, but anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I thought it was fascinating. Uh, again, it kind of, uh, in, in my, my view there, it helps to support, no, we weren't off our rocker there. We were having these things happen. Uh, you know, what's to say this coming in the future? I know there's still a lot of talk about it. I don't normally get into it too much at this point right now. Uh, but uh, but I am aware, you know, that things are supposed to happen still yet. And again, I still feel like it's like this type of situation here. Uh, it's not that it would be all over the planet wiping out the earth and things like that. But here and there, you'll have those impact sites. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, the people there in this little town of Akur, Africa, uh, they were very fortunate that it landed when it did its final actual impact. It was outside the city. Uh, so, you know, luckily for them, or, and it wasn't as a monster, monster rock. You know, what if it was bigger? Who the heck knows what would have happened then? Like Russia, a lot of, a lot of things happened back in 2013. Anyway, Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. Thank you for your support of this broadcast. And uh, we thank you for everything you do uh, in helping us along the way. God bless you.